First, let's define what dose and response are. Dose is the amount of a drug administered to achieve a desired therapeutic effect. It is typically measured in units such as milligrams, micrograms, or milliliters. Response refers to the biological effect that occurs in the body as a result of the administered dose. This can include therapeutic effects, side effects, and toxic effects. The response can be measured in various ways. For example, we can measure the response to antihypertensive by clinically measuring BP, the response to insulin by measuring blood glucose and the response to analgesics by pain scores. The response can also be the measurement of receptor activation that we have studied in drug receptor interaction. So the dose and response are closely related to each other and this relationship is called a dose-response relationship. The intensity of response increase with increasing dose. If we plot their relationship with dose on the x-axis and response on the y-axis, we would get a curve like this called linear dose-response curve which is curvilinear in shape. Such dose-response curve despite being simple is not suitable for comprehensive analysis over a wide range of doses. So, there is a transformed version where the dose is plotted on a logarithmic scale, allowing for comparison of data especially over a wide range of doses. It is called log dose-response curve, and is sigmoidal in shape. For most drug response studies, the log dose-response curve is preferred, so we will study it next. The sigmoidal shape of dose-response curve reflects three distinct phases. The initial lag phase, a steep linear phase, and a plateau phase. Lag phase represents the initial part of the dose-response curve where at very low doses, no significant effect is observed because the drug concentration is insufficient to interact significantly with its targets. As the dose increases, the response also increases in a linear fashion during the linear phase because more drug molecules are available to interact with their targets. Finally, at higher doses, the response plateaus as all of the available receptors become occupied by the drug. There are several predictions we can make from the dose-response curve. Let's begin with drug potency. Potency refers to the amount of a drug required to produce a given effect. A highly potent drug will produce a therapeutic effect at a lower dose compared to a less potent drug. Potency is often determined by comparing the doses of two or more drugs needed to achieve the same effect. Typically, it is expressed in terms of the concentration, EC50, or dose, ED50, which is the dose required to produce 50% of the maximum effect of the drug. Given here are the dose-response curve for fentanyl and morphine. It is obvious that the dose needed to produce 50% of maximum response in fentanyl is less than that of morphine. The ED50 of fentanyl is 0.1 mg and of morphine is 10 mg. From the dose-response curve, we can appreciate that a more potent drug has its dose-response curve shifted to the left compared to a less potent drug. Next we have drug efficacy which refers to the maximum effect that a drug can produce, regardless of the dose. The maximum effect a drug can produce is determined by its efficacy. This is typically represented by the plateau in a dose-response curve. Now let's draw some more dose-response curves to compare their efficacy. From the curves, we can see that drug A produces the maximum effect when compared to the other drugs. We can also notice that the dose required to produce the 50% of maximum effect by each drug is the same. So, the potency of the four drugs are the same but drug A has the maximum efficacy. Usually full agonists have high efficacy as they produce a maximum receptor response, while partial agonists have lower efficacy as they produce a submaximal response. Here is another dose-response curve of opioids all with similar efficacy but different potencies. 
Although these drugs act on opioid receptors, differences in their chemical structures and pharmacokinetics result in varying potencies. Now, we shall see into the safety of the drug. The easier way to determine the safety of drug is by looking at the slope of the dose-response curve. The drug with steeper slope has a narrow margin of safety as a small increase in dose can cause a much larger increase in the response. In the curve given here, drug A has a lower margin of safety than drug B. In drug B, there is a wider range of doses that we can give without abruptly increasing the response. Apart from the slope of the dose-response curve, there are important concepts like effective dose 50 and lethal dose 50 to assess the safety of a drug. The effective dose is the dose of a drug that produces the desired therapeutic effect in a specific percentage of a population. For example, ED50 is the dose at which 50% of the population experiences the intended effect. Likewise, ED10 and ED90 describe the therapeutic effect achieved in 10% and 90% of the population respectively. The lethal dose is the dose of a drug that causes death in a specific percentage of a population. For instance, LD50 is the dose at which 50% of the population dies due to the drug's effects. It also have lethal dose 90 and 10. ED50 and LD50 is used to calculate the therapeutic index which is the quantitative difference between the therapeutic effect and the lethal effect. It is defined as the ratio between the toxic dose or lethal dose and the effective dose of a drug. The drug with therapeutic index close to 1 has higher danger of toxicity, meaning that that dose that caused toxicity and therapeutic effect has minimal difference. We have another concept called therapeutic range or window. It refers to the concentration range of a drug in the blood that produces the desired therapeutic effect without causing toxicity. To measure it, we need to mark two points on the dose-response curve. The first one is the lower limit, which is the minimum drug concentration for obtaining the desired response. It is called the minimum effective concentration and corresponds to the start of linear phase of dose-response curve. The upper limit is called the minimum toxic concentration above which the drug causes toxic effects. It is also called maximum effective concentration as above this concentration, the response remains same or rather causes toxicity. The range of drug doses lying between these two points denotes therapeutic range or window. Finally, this illustration covers both therapeutic window and index. As we can see, therapeutic window includes ranges of drug doses between minimum effective dose and the maximum effective dose while therapeutic index includes doses ranged between effective dose 50 and lethal dose 50.